Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to be showing a finished product uh, on something I've been working on. Instead, I'm going to do a series of videos on a project that I'm working on and show the process. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. One is as an accountability piece for me to kind of keep me keep me going on this and actually follow through with it. And the other is to give some insight into uh, other folks, the, the process that I go through when I create things like this. You know, the, the cool thing about creativity, I'm into creativity and the whole concept of creativity. And it, it's all about the journey, you know, not the, not the process. We, we end up with finished pieces many times, but it's all about, about getting there. And when I first started to get into some of the synthesizers here a, a few years ago now, originally my interest was in trying to combine it in some fashion with my, my horn playing on my trombone and possibly even the, the euphonium. So after doing some work with these, I decided to see if I could put this together and work in the trombone and the synthesis of sound together. Uh, question was where to start, so I decided to give myself some limitations. I have this kind of cool book you might be interested in. It's called A, A Beautiful Constraint, How to Transform Your Limitations into Advantages. And it's um, by two fellows, uh, Morgan and Barden. And the whole notion is that we can take our constraints, our limitations, if you will, and use them to our advantage. So I decided to limit myself to using the Arturia Drum Brute Impact, the drum machine that I use, and the Behringer TD3, the baseline synthesizer, analog baseline synthesizer that I got earlier this spring, which I've been enjoying. And further, to on the baseline synthesizer, limit myself to sounds in the machine itself for a number of reasons. It'll make it a little easier for me. So I, I searched through and I, I found, I did find a baseline that I felt would work. And this is what it sounds like. I thought I'd try and play off of this. And then the next step was to work in the drum brute impact and get some kind of beat underneath it. That's what I did there, so I've got that. I did tune the bass line to B flat. And what I noticed was it's uh, pretty much hovering on the B flat with F and A flat. And that started looking like a B flat dominant chord to me. So what I did, took my horn, I am going to use a bucket mute tonight for a couple reasons. Kind of cut down on the sound a little bit. And I really like the bucket mute. I get a lot of compliments on this when I'm out playing with it. So like I said, it sounds a lot like a B flat dominant. So here's the here's what we got. I 
and then just started playing around with it. And I did add in that G, which is the sixth. Which just has a cool sound, and if you're familiar with Miles Davis Friendly Freeloader, that's the sixth. sounded really cool so I may play around with that with a digital delay on the trombone so that's where it's at so I just have to develop some some more on the horn tying into all this and so hopefully next time we'll have next stage of this project. So thanks for joining in. Thank you. 